Hello everyone, I'm Bob Ward for Microsoft. Welcome to a special edition of Azure SQL focused on performance, a guide to performance troubleshooting with Azure SQL. In today's episode, we've got another scenario to look at, a performance problem of high CPU due to lack of resources. Now, if you remember from the series, we're focusing on running versus waiting to start looking at a performance problem, and today involves a high CPU situation. We're still going to look at top resource consuming queries to dive in on why we have a high CPU situation. And remember the different scenarios we're covering this series, but today's uh, particular episode is focused on something called lack of resources. So a high CPU situation due to lack of resources, and we'll show you how to detect it, why it's happening, and how to solve it. But in order to do that, I introduce you to a few topics. When you provision an Azure SQL database, you have a couple of choices. Something called a pricing tier or purchasing model. One's called DTU or database transaction unit model. One is called a vCore model where you pick a specific number of virtual cores. Now we recommend the vCore model because you have benefits like Azure, Azure hybrid benefit to use for that model. And so that's what we're going to use in this specific scenario. Once you pick a vCore specific model, you have something called a service tier to choose. The service tier is going to dictate what kind of resources you can get, both for cores, IO, and even replicas for your workload. Now, what we're going to do today in today's episode is use the general purpose service tier. And one of the reasons we're going to do that is because we're going to show you the difference between something called provisioned or serverless as part of our choices. Also, don't forget, if you have to deploy a lot of Azure SQL databases, you can take advantage of a concept called elastic pools. Okay, just like in other episodes, we're going to look at the troubleshooting process, a step-by-step -step process, and you'll see it in action in a second with a demonstration. We're going to identify that there's a high CPU problem. Then we're going to see what are the top resource-consuming queries by CPU. We're going to see if the query is actually tuned. Does it use an index, for example? Now, it could be a single execution of a query is fast. But it's possible over time, CPU usage has gone up and you don't understand why. Now, one thing you might look at that, to see, are there weights on CPU? Yes, it's possibly running and waiting at the same time. We'll explain why when you see the demonstration. And it could be that there's just an increase in usage of your workload. So it could be that one query execution is fast, but a bunch of people trying to use it, you may not have enough resources in your deployment to handle the workload. So what you'll end up doing is potentially scaling or adding more vCores without migration, or use a concept called serverless. Once you've done that, you would go verify that your problem is resolved. Now, as you're about to see a demonstration on this, don't forget, you can try this yourself at Azure SQL Workshop. Let's see it now in action. So again, just like before, it starts with a database I've built an Azure SQL database. And if you look over here to the right, you'll see that I've got a customer table with the usual columns, uh, customer ID, unique key, and customer information. I've also got indexes. I want to make sure indexes are used. We saw in previous episodes. We want to make sure, we also want to make sure we don't have an anti-pattern query. So we've got the right procedures built with the right data types to match our data. So we should be set up for success to run a successful workload with this database. Now again, we'll start with the Azure portal and go look to see, do we have a high CPU problem? Looking at that monitoring tab, if we scroll down, you can kind of ski down here, we do see a high CPU problem, but we see something different. A couple things. Number one, we see that CPU was fine a while back, but then all of a sudden, a little bit later, CPU goes up to 100%. Now, in addition, we see a new counter called workers show up. At the same time, CPU goes to 100%, we see this massive increase of workers. This is a signature for you seeing this, that you may not have enough CPU resources for all the workers you have for the workload running for your database. So we already see some information now, but we want to go do that uh, troubleshooting step of looking for the top resource consuming queries. So back over to the query store like we did before, looking at Object Explorer, looking at top resource consuming queries, I can look at the query and the plan. Now I'll see here, here's the query I'm running. I'm going after that unique key, in this case, tab key, and I'm using an index. Looks great, you know, looks like it's running fast. In fact, if you look over to the right in this chart, which is run over time, I can look at CPU time and notice something interesting. At the bottom down here, CPU time seems to be okay. But over time, if you look up at the top, CPU went crazy, it went way up. So over time, CPU has increased. 
And I got to figure out why that has happened. So what are we going to do about it? Well, first of all, you could look at query weight statistics. That's going to show you in this example that there's a lot of weights on CPU. That's why I mentioned before, you can actually have weights in a running situation. And it is our query that's involved in this weights. This is an indication that I don't have enough CPU resources. So I'm waiting on CPU as a resource, but I'm also running a lot with high CPU. You might be wondering, why could this be occurring? So back over the Azure portal, we're going to show something new. We're going to drill into compute utilization with something called Azure Metrics. So I'm able to go here on this compute utilization chart and click on it and go get a deeper dive and actually look at different metrics. So first of all, let me change the granularity here to like the last 30 minutes time range and down to one minute. So I'm going to apply this. I'm going to see that pattern of workers and high CPU utilization. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a metric. I'll scroll over here to hit add metric and I'll select a metric. I get a list to pick from. And one of them I'm going to look at here is sessions count. Look at this. There's a huge number of sessions that have happened during this. But if I flip back over here on my time chart and go back to say the last hour, what's the difference? Wow, look at that. When CPU was really, really low, I didn't have many sessions. CPU got really high because I added my session count. So really what happened is I just had a big increase in usage of my application, but I had a huge amount of CPU with it. So it's possible I don't have enough resources to handle this increase in usage. So what do I do about this? Well, back in the Azure portal, you can look at the overview page, and this is where you can change cores. So I'll click on what's called pricing tier. You can see I'm using the general purpose service tier. Let me click and drill in. This is really easy stuff here. I can go down where it says V cores and I can scale it. And by the way, there's no migration required to do that and very little downtime. So I can add like say 10 times the number of V cores, make it to like 20 if I want to. And if I go over here at the bottom and hit apply, Azure database will automatically give me after a few minutes, a proper number of 20 V cores. So, and I did no migration to actually make this happen. Now I kind of time lapsed that. It took a few minutes to run to do this, but now I'm set up for success and I can verify in the portal, indeed I have 20 V cores to run. So let's go make sure the problem's resolved by scaling the number of cores by going back in here and looking at our client workload. Remember now, originally it took like nine minutes to run this when I had that big worker percentage, but let's run it now with 20 V cores. Look at that. It now takes about one minute versus nine minutes with more cores added, running a ton of users just like I did before. So I kind of know that by scaling users, I certainly have improved performance by doing that. So let's look a little bit further at this and see what to do next. Let's go and see what the portal looks like. Can you see here that here was this utilization from, from before, and if I look over to the right on the battery, let's focus on this, look in the right over here, you can see that. So sheep utilization did go up pretty high, but it's a very shorter period of time. So it's even possible that I can even add more cores to this workload, because I've tuned my query already, to even give me better performance, even less utilization. But one of the things I wanted to show you that's possible here, because you may be saying to yourself, well, I don't know if I need two or 20. Like what, if, what do I do in scenarios where I'm not sure how many cores I need? This is where serverless comes in. So back over here in the pricing tier where we chose our 20 cores, I have a different option called serverless instead of provisioned. If I pick serverless, I get new options. I get scaling factors. I can now say, hey, the max number of cores I need is 20 in this case, so I can scale that over. And as I do that, it gives me a min number of cores, which is a little over two. This is really great because now SQL, Azure SQL database, will auto scale my workload up and down for the proper number of cores, depending on my resource needs. I even have the ability to pause my workload and not pay for compute during cycles where I'm not using the database. So serverless is a very powerful way to get auto scaling to solve this high CPU problem for lack of resources. So in summary, we had a typical performance problem, running or waiting. We found out what queries were involved. We knew we had a high CPU problem and we looked for the top resource consuming query by CPU. Now the query was fast for a single execution and tuned, but the current deployment we found out could not handle an increase in workload usage. So what we did, we scaled our database with a bigger number of V cores without migration, 
or chose a serverless option for auto scale. And that, in summary, is how we solved the high CPU problem for lack of resources. Now we want you to have more resources to learn more about this. So at the top, you can see a resource to learn more about vCores and using the provision versus serverless option. In addition, like in our other episodes, we want you to have the right resources for our beginner series, the workshop to find scripts for what we showed you today, our learning path for Azure SQL fundamentals, or more videos from our team to learn more about Azure SQL. And don't forget our books that get, allow you to do a deeper dive on the Azure SQL topics. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on looking at a performance problem for high CP for lack of resources. I look forward to seeing you next time on a special edition of Azure SQL for Beginners.